This is the guide for you if you want a crazy easy tier 3 schematic farm that you can do now in the new season as opposed to all of the old methods that have already been patched by now and that you don't need a crazy amount of prep work in order to do. Like you can do this on a completely fresh character. It also doesn't take a huge amount of setting up in the game itself so you can spend most of your match on the actual farm and if you'd be interested in even easier strategies for this as the year goes on then drop a like on the video and maybe even consider subscribing. So let's begin with what you're going to equip in the menu. Your insurance weapon is going to be the RGL-80 grenade launcher. And this is actually going to kind of act like equipment. I know it sounds weird. It will make sense when we start doing the strat. We're also going to equip throwing knives here because they are crazy OP still to this day. And decoy grenades. Now, in theory, this does all work without decoy grenades. It used to be that we could carry three decoys. They lowered that to two. And so here and there, naturally, you're going to find yourself running out of them at times. And that's why in this video, we're going to be doing it as if you don't have the decoys. But bring them anyway because it doesn't hurt. Your field upgrade for this should be Ether Shroud, assuming that you are playing solo. If you're playing co-op, you might want Healing Aura, but I'm making this guide solo accessible, so we're going with Ether Shroud. And that's the list. So things like your upgraded backpack, three-play armor, self-res, sentry, jug suit, all those sorts of things are obviously nice to have if you've got them, but they are not necessary for this strategy because you'll find everything you need in the game. Now, similarly, if you have craftable perks already unlocked, the following ones are really useful. They're nice to have, but again, non-essential. We can get them in game where we need them. Stamina up is great for getting away from zombies faster, obviously. PhD is pretty much essential for this strat. So if you don't have it unlocked as an acquisition here, we will be going to buy it in game. And then Jug, Quick Revive for faster health regen, Speed Cola, and Tombstone are all nice to have as well. Finally, if you've got a schematic for a craftable purple Ethereum crystal just to get to pap level one, that could be really handy for this as well and will save you about five minutes. But once again, non-essential. When the game begins, if you have brought any perks or crystals in, pop those right away, and you can fire it at the zombies that are around you while we do these next steps, because it's going to give us a chance to get some chunks of flesh. So kill zombies as you go, check for chunks of flesh, but your priority really is to look for an ACV escort contract. So I'd recommend jumping in a purple rift if you spawn next to one, grabbing all the points and looking for a contract you can fly to, or just grab a vehicle that's near you and drive over to that escort. You don't want to dilly-dally too much here, so be as fast as you can. And then once the contract begins, you want the ACV to run over as many any zombies as possible because it's going to drop chunks of flesh at a really high rate. Your grenade launcher kills will also have a chance to drop flesh here, but the ACV contract is just a handy backup because it's a bit more consistent. And once you've got three chunks of flesh from doing this, you can cancel the contract or if it's near completion, you can just finish it off just to get that money. And while that's all going on or just after you've canceled the contract, if you have the opportunity to run past a Merc camp, you can spam your RGL at the Mercs and then just quickly run in and open up the Merc box to grab the two plate armor vest that you'll find as a guaranteed spawn inside. Once you've got your chunks of flesh, it's time to head into the tier three zone. And I know that might be a bit intimidating for some of you, but it's okay. Don't worry. I'm going to give you a couple routes in here, which make this really easy for you. So the easiest way in is by parachuting out of an ether tear, one of those rifts that I talked about earlier. But if you can't find one of those nearby you, you can also jump off of the cranes or alternatively, you can just teleport into tier three. And if you want a guide on that, I've included it in my tips and tricks video for my Modern Warfare Zombies, and that's linked on the screen right now and in the description down below. Finally, alternatively, you could just climb this wall here and run over to the area that we need to get to, but this is definitely a bit more fiddly if you don't have decoys. But if you manage to find an ammo refill cache when you spawned into your match and you've hit that, then maybe you do have some to use here. Or you have found a vehicle on your travels and you can just use that to drive there instead. Go up to the doghouse and deposit three chunks of flesh all at once to spawn in a tier three dog. This dog is a big bonus in solo. In co-op, you may not want to spend the time on this, but in solo, I really recommend you do because it's going to distract zombies. It's going to distract manglers and mimics and disciples and special zombies. It's going to distract bounty bosses as well. It's going to revive you if you go down. It will teleport to nearby you if you teleport out of the area for some reason. And overall, all of those benefits only cost about, I don't know, three or four minutes of your time getting all this done at the very beginning of your game. So it's 100% worth it. Now, at this point, if you've already got some points as as well, it's a good opportunity to just quickly run over to Wonder Fizz and grab yourself PhD for the love of God. And then remember the perks after that that we're going to be prioritizing are Stamina Up and then Jug, Quick Revive, Speed Cola, and Tombstone. So your next objective is to look for a Deliver Cargo Contract. They changed the Tier 3 Cargo Contract spawns after Season 1 launched, so you can't just 
cancel an ACVS score, and instant respawn the deliver cargo contract like you used to be able to do. However, if you see an ACV escort contract inside tier three, it is still important to run over to it and cancel it wherever possible because that's going to affect the rest of this strategy. So back to deliver cargo. This is where it should be located on your map. And if it's not there, you have to either complete other contracts or cancel other contracts in the tier three zone. We'll talk about that more in a moment. But first, I'm going to explain what to do if it is there for you. So when you see it on your map, run over to it and pick it up and it will have moved into this little shop thing here, by the way. So grab it and run over to the left side and go towards the gas station where it's going to spawn in your cargo. If there aren't many zombies there, you can just shoot the RGL a couple of times to knock those zombies down. And ideally, you'll do that right next to the garage doors. And that will allow you to open the garage doors and hop into the vehicle. However, if there's a bunch of zombies, you can kite them away a little bit first before firing the grenade launcher. Or this could be an opportunity to throw a decoy. And I recommend throwing that decoy as far away from the doors themselves as possible while still attracting the zombies so that the zombies don't run straight into the vehicle and damage it once they lose interest in the decoy. Once you're in the vehicle, start driving away straight away and follow my path here. It's relatively easy, but they have added some zombie spawns now. So depending on how much damage the vehicle is taking as you do this, you may actually want to avoid running over those zombies just because it's extra vehicle damage that is relatively easy to dodge. Now, at the very end of the route here, you obviously have to drop the cargo to the helicopter. And there's usually a big swarm of zombies that you have to drive through. Drive straight on through them, even if it's going to destroy the vehicle, because you need those zombies to be dead. And when the contract ends and you've successfully completed it, it should kill most zombies in the immediate area when it spawns in that rewards rift. But if there are still some stragglers, you can stun them with the grenade launcher as you loot. You can also optionally throw a decoy here if you still have one, and your dog should should help you take down those last couple of zombies as well. So you've done a contract and you've got some loot, but now we need to rinse and repeat. The first thing you're going to do is head up to this courtyard here and grab the ammo cache to refresh your ammo and also crucially refill your decoys and your throwing knives. If you find any loot caches around here as well, you should definitely take a moment to try and grab everything from inside there too, because they often contain turret circuits and other useful items. And if you find a turret circuit, it's going to make some stuff we're about to move on to much easier. Now, in order to get our cargo contract to come back now that we've done it, or if you didn't have a cargo contract available in the first place, the reason for that is that tier three is filled up with other contracts instead. And so you need to either complete some of those contracts or cancel some of those contracts to make space for deliver cargo to spawn in. Now, just canceling them is really straightforward, but we might as well do the contracts if we have an easy method to do them. And so I'm going to run through some tips on how you can do weapon stashes and spore controls and outlast and all sorts of bits and pieces here while you're waiting for your deliver cargo to become available. But the priority at all times should be deliver cargo because it's so damn fast. And this is also, by the way, why I told you to just cancel ACV escorts whenever you see them because they're the hardest contract in tier three. And so we're never going to bother doing them. It's just not worth the hassle. So for weapon stashes, I'd say it's possible to do this without a turret circuit. But if you've got a turret circuit, it makes your life crazy easy. You're going to start the contract drilling the safe and then mantle up or climb up these piles of boxes at this kind of jump up balcony area and get ready to jump out of the window. This will give you a second in the courtyard where you can deposit the circuit into the turret if you've got one. And then you can stay in the vicinity of the turret and just run in circles like I do here and allow the turret to do absolutely all the work for you. Or you can move your way back inside next to the safe and once again, climb up the boxes. And when you're standing on that balcony, throw a decoy away from the jump up so that all the zombies in the area path towards that instead. Use both your decoys here, being wary of the fact that zombies now spawn and run through the window sometimes. So you need to watch out for those when you're on the balcony. And remember, you have an RGL that's crazy useful for stunning zombies. So use that to your advantage too. Pretty much any time in this video, honestly, that I say use a decoy, you can use the RGL for the same purpose. And that's why we brought it along as our insurance weapon. So keep on stunning zombies that come your way or distracting them with decoys. And then hop out of the window like before, run over to the ammo cache, refresh your decoys and repeat, running away from the zombies and using throwing knives where necessary and then clambering up onto that balcony and using decoys to keep the zombies at bay. But obviously this is significantly easier with a turret. So don't be precious about it. Use the turret circuit if you've got one. Now, if you're set on doing it without a circuit, I'd also say that a trick that you can use here to make it a bit easier is to stash decoys in your inventory instead of equipping them before refreshing your ammo cache, just so that you're running 
flying around with like four decoys instead of two. And that means that if you're in a pinch, you'll still have some backup ones that you can use if you need to wait an extra 18 seconds or something for your ammo cache to get off cooldown. Next up is the Spore Control Contract. This is a lot easier with a larger backpack because it will allow you to stow the inhibitors. Those are the special equipments that you need to throw for this contract. But when you go to pick them up, it's essential that you stow your decoys instead of replacing them and dropping the decoys on the floor because otherwise you won't be able to refill decoys at ammo caches in the future in your match. Or at least you won't be able to until you find new decoys. So grab as many stacks of inhibitors as you can carry without losing your decoys and then run as fast as you can to each spore and throw the inhibitors down without destroying the spores straight away, just throwing the inhibitors. Then as soon as you have a chance to breathe, equip the next stack of inhibitors and repeat the process until all inhibitors are on the ground and all spores have become vulnerable. You can then take out the spores crazy easily with the RGL from pretty much any range and that will complete the contract. Next up is the Outlast contract. For this location, I ran in a circle around the interior area and I basically kept shooting zombies with the RGL to knock them down. Now, my objective here, my real goal, is not to kill every single zombie in sight. If there's maybe a dog in sight that is on my tails and is really biting at my heels, then yeah, maybe I do want to take that down. And you could use the RGL or you could use a throwing knife on it as well. Throwing knife obviously being very, very powerful here. But overall, the rest of your focus really is just stunning them with the RGL. Now, if you want to, you could use a sentry turret to disrupt the horde a little bit here, like I'm doing in the gameplay. But to be honest, you just don't need to. And as long as you're really careful and keeping your wits about you for dogs and super sprinters, you should be able to play uh, essentially a game of cat and mouse with this and still complete the outlast. Next up is bounty contracts. Now these I simply would not do if you don't have a turret circuit, a sentry turret, or a jug suit. One of those is going to be essentials, but the good thing is that you get jug suits, for example, as rewards from other tier three contracts. So it might be that you choose to prioritize spore control when you don't have the rewards. And then when you do have a couple of rewards stored up, that's when you decide to do something like this. So let's say you activate the bounty and it gives you a decide or a mangler or a mimic. Killing one of those with a jug suit is pretty straightforward. But be careful if you've got a mega abomination as your target, as there's a good chance that you won't entirely kill it with just one suit. That's why I'd say that having a sentry turret in your back pocket could also be handy, because that could help finish off the mega abomination, just the last little bit that you need to do. Or if it is a mega abomination, you could choose not to use the jug suit and instead just use a turret circuit. Those are crazy good against mega bombs. Or you could say, well, I've got two sentry turrets, so I'll use those. And those should also shred the mega bomb pretty quickly. In theory, you don't need two. You could just do it with one, but I'm doing it with two in the gameplay here because I had two. And you can also buy these, remember, as well. And you don't need to hold on to all of the cash that you're going to get from doing all of these contracts, so you might as well spend it on a couple of cheap sentry turrets just to keep the farm going. And the same goes for buying yourself tier three armor, buying yourself self revives and all those sorts of things. Now, if you have no sentries and no jug suit and no turret circuits and just nothing at all, no will to continue, then as soon as the bounty spawns, you can just cancel the contract if you don't have those kill streaks. Like it's fine. Don't stress about it. Don't ever stress about canceling a contract because your highest priority is to survive to do more cargoes rather than putting yourself in sketchy situations to try and squeeze out an extra contract here or there. Now, if you also need strats for the Dark Ether, I've got you covered. Click the link on screen right now to watch my guide for a super easy Dark Ether schematics farm. I'll see you there.